Hey guys, Toolman Tim here. Today we're going to talk about the four main fuels that you can get to fuel different types of generators. Gas, propane, natural gas, and diesel. It's just going to be strictly pros and cons of each fuel type. And why you might want to choose one over the other, or why you might consider one you've never considered before. So let's start with the breakdown. The one that's going to give you the most power output, as in the most wattage for size, is going to be diesel then it's gonna be gasoline, then it's gonna be propane, and then it's gonna be natural gas. So all things being equal, you'll get the most power out of diesel. Then gasoline's about 20% less than that, propane about 10% less than that, then natural gas comes in at the dead last about 10% less than that. Next, we're gonna talk about generator cost. To buy them brand new from the store, which one costs the most, which one costs the least? We're gonna go cheapest to most expensive on this one. Gas literally floods the market. They're the cheapest generators you can get out there. Then propane comes next, and that has a lot to do with camping, then natural gas, and then diesel. We might say, Tim, what about multi-fuel options? There's dual and tri-fuel out there. Overall, they're about 10 to 20% more in cost than their single fuel counterparts. Availability of generator by fuel type really follows cost as well. Gas is the most available, propane's the next most available, dual fuel and tri-fuel, then diesel, and then finally natural gas. Most times natural gas tend to be whole home setups. Let's talk about fuel safety. That really comes down to a couple of things. Storage, its ability to explode, and its ability to catch fire easily. The first one I'm gonna go with, the safest, is natural gas. And that's because you don't tend to have it stored in large, voluminous quantities around your property. Also, it's very, very low pressure, and almost always, if you bust a line, have a crack, it's just gonna expand into the environment with no issues. Next comes diesel. Have you ever tried to light diesel on fire? You can do it, but it's not easy. It's not like in the movies where they'll throw a cigarette into a can of diesel and she'll blow up. No, it's not. Is it volatile? Absolutely. Propane, it's the biggest reason for me, is the fact that it's compressed. Whenever you take something and push it into a container like that, you automatically introduce a certain type of volatility. If you're dealing with propane, you're also dealing with storage. You're dealing with 20 or 30 pound tanks, maybe four, maybe eight of them underneath your workbench or something like that, or a 500 or a thousand gallon propane pig in your backyard. Either way, to me, that's more dangerous than having a natural gas line coming to your home. And then the most dangerous would be gasoline, of course. Gasoline is awful, especially in warm temperatures. I've had gas cans that have been in the heat that have sprung a leak and I've come in and there's been a little piss of gas coming out across. It's very easy for gas fumes to build up and sit in somewhere. And as soon as they get ignited, heaven help you all. You ever spill gasoline? You light gasoline on fire? It is by far the most volatile of the four fuels. All right, next let's talk about storage life, longest to shortest. Number one, propane. You can store propane basically indefinitely. As long as the container or the canister it's in doesn't get a rust hole or doesn't get punctured, propane will be good the day you put it into a tank. It'll be good there in 200 years when you pull it back out. Next, diesel. Right now, when you compare diesel to gasoline on the market, you're getting two to four times the storage life just straight out of the pump. Jerry can of diesel and a jerry can of gasoline, diesel is going to last two to four times as long. And then of course, gasoline, especially nowadays with ethanol in gas, not a good thing whatsoever. The water settles to the bottom, the ethanol settles out of the gasoline. Within weeks, within months for sure, it becomes way less viable. Now, can you treat it? Yes, you can. You can treat it just like you treat diesel. Natural gas, on the other hand, just doesn't have a way to store it. You're a slave to the pipeline coming into your home. But the infrastructure is really robust and the least likely to be disrupted during economic upheaval and some natural disasters. That's one of the biggest benefits of natural gas is you don't have to go to the gas station, you don't have to go get propane tanks filled, you don't have to go get diesel. As long as it's not an earthquake or a wildfire, then you probably will still have natural gas. Amount of storage on hand. Ease and availability of storing copious amounts of said fuel on hand for a long-term power outage. Number one, the best for that would be natural gas. And the reason that is, is it's basically unlimited unless it doesn't get shut off. And you'll say, but, 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 I know, I know. Again, in a normal situation, a long-term power outage due to say frozen power lines or whatever it happens to be, nat gas is still gonna be pumping for a long time. Now, it uh, doesn't mean you should have only natural gas, I don't think, but I'm a big proponent of leaning hard into natural gas for your generator. Next is propane, because it's very easy 
to get a 500 or a 1,000 gallon propane storage tank delivered to your property, and most companies will supply it or give it to you at an extreme discount if you sign up for regular deliveries with them. Next is diesel. Now again, simply because it's way less volatile than gasoline, it's much safer by its nature to store a bunch on hand. If you live in a city, you're probably not gonna store any more diesel than you are gasoline. But if you happen to live on an acreage in the country somewhere and you have farm equipment, you might just have a 200, 300, 500 gallon storage tank of diesel. Think about that. That might be the deciding factor for you on which generator to buy. Next, we're talking gasoline. Your options are basically five gallon jugs or maybe a 200 gallon gravity fed tank on stilts that you might see at an acreage somewhere. How about fuel availability during power outages? Number one, natural gas. If it's not an earthquake or a wildfire, you should be pretty good. Number two, diesel. So many spots to get diesel and less vehicles that are gonna be fighting over it. You can go to card lock, there'll be farm equipment places, and overall there's just less diesel vehicles on the road, which means you're gonna be fighting with less potential fuel consumers when the power goes out. Propane, a little bit harder to get a hold of during an outage, but it tends to not disappear quite as fast. People do go to buy propane to cook meals and that sort of thing, but there tends to not be quite as big a rush on propane during power outages as there is gasoline. And of course, gasoline, that's gonna be the hardest one to find during a prolonged outage. While everybody has gas generators and everybody has gas for cars, they need the gas for their cars to drive to get the gas for their generators. Nobody stores any type of fuel ahead of time for generators. How do you solve that? Store whatever fuel you want on hand ahead of time. If you have a gas generator, store 12 five gallon jugs in a shed away from your home. If you've got diesel, store it there. If you have propane, get it delivered ahead of time. If there's bad weather coming, call and get the delivery topped up. Multi-fuel options, how available are they? Well, number one, the most popular dual fuel generator is this guy right behind me right here. That is gas and propane. And why are they very popular? For camping, plain and simple. If generators are sold out everywhere else, you go to all your big box stores, it's to Harbor Freight, nobody has one, go to your camping supply places, go to your RV dealerships. Quite often they'll have a few of these sitting on their shelf. Sometimes people don't think about that. The next most common is the tri-fuel, gas, propane, natural gas. They run really well for the 10K generators, the ones that'll kick out 10,000 watts. They're really good as a slightly portable whole home addition. Next is diesel. That's the one thing diesel isn't really good at is a dual fuel option. I'm a big believer in two is one, one is none, three is a guarantee and I love having multiple options of fuel to run my generators on. Diesel, not so much. How do you choose? Well, let me ask you a few things. Is this a small portable that you're looking for for just camping or just running your fridge or your freezer? Well, you can probably get away with just a gasoline or a gas and propane. It's really easy to store just a few five gallon jugs or a few 20 or 30 pound propane tanks. If you're looking for something to power almost everything in your house, my preference, number one is natural gas for the safety and the unlimited amount. The lower cost, you're gonna get a little bit less power out of it, but I would never buy just strictly a natural gas generator. If you're looking to run something for your whole home, seriously consider a tri-fuel generator. There just aren't that many dual fuel options out there that run off propane and nat gas. And there's no natural gas gasoline options that I know of. Gas and propane for something small, tri-fuel for something big, diesel if you live out on acreage, and you have unlimited access to diesel. If you think you've got the fuel type figured out now and you wanna know more about how to choose the exact size of generator, check out this video I did right here. And if you stuck around to the end of this video, that means I made this generator video just for you. So do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, show some love to the channel and stick around because I got a ton of videos just like this one for you. And as always, stay happy, stay healthy and have a great week.